live any any moment now. Lovely. Oh, that's nice. We'll see if it uh we'll see if it if it begins. I just got a notification. It says yep. so. so. Yep. Uh, We're rocking and rolling. Cool. <laughs> well, uh, this is an illustration uh, by Harry Clark. I believe is sometime in the early 1900s. Uh, it was for Edgar Allan Poe story. This this illustration is titled "Into the Maelstrom," and um, and there's there's something about it that I like. I I think it's all the ellipses. Um, so <laughs> so I figured uh, I was just inspired by this, and um, so I thought I would uh, just get warmed up with, uh, with a couple of these a couple of these ellipses, sort of thinking about this into the maelstrom. Oh yes. That's a good choice. Thanks. Well, it is like it's like Inktober, right? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't practice the Inktober, um, but uh, but it is like I. It is really fun to to see everybody's drawings and stuff. Hey, good morning, Amber. Good morning. We're just getting morning, warmed morning. up with uh, this Harry Clark illustration into the Maelstrom. It's called. We're just thinking about ellipses. And warming up. That's the that's the point here. We are warming up. Yes. People are starting to, to file in. So if you're joining us, you should get warmed up too. You can uh, get your paper and your pencil or your iPad or whatever, and I don't know, find something that inspires you to get warmed up. But something like you know. Something simple, I think, is just to move your move your your arm around, move your body around. With these big swoops right here at the bottom, you can't even see the other side of it. Yeah, it's not very. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look very pretty. I don't suppose, but uh, the point, right? The point is to just warm up those muscles hey kyle how you doing doing great how about you guys hey kyle good morning kyle good morning how's everybody doing good 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 good, good, good. Uh, like i was mentioning just getting warmed up here with this harry clark illustration it's, it's titled into the maelstrom so i'm just <laughs> i'm just like drawing these uh yeah these insane swoops it doesn't look anything like it but i'm feeling <laughs> i'm feeling warmed up you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> all it matters is warming up man here this is this is a fun little illustration like there you can see there's like a looks like a castaway holding on oh, to okay, your yeah, light yeah. on a little barrel yeah barrel like some shipwreck there looks like there's a there's the ship Looks like it's hanging on. It's about ready to go down the drain, as it were. Yeah, I was, I was, I was confused there for a second. I was like, "Is that, is that a, like a bug? What is, what is that?" <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a. It gives you the sense of vastness, right? It's like yeah. this, this, and everything's hanging over this. Uh, you know, yeah, it's about to go down the drain. As yeah, it were. whales. Is that I don't know what it, I guess That's what I thought yeah. it looked like a whale tail. <laughs> I think you can use your imagination for sure. <laughs> but yeah, but there's this guy. This seems a, it seems a bit out of proportion. Like this person and then their ship. I don't know. I guess they're. It's. I guess it's really far away. You know what I mean? Very deep. That it is. Um, well, there's my. <laughs> there's my warm up, and then there's the you know. The inspiration is right yeah. next to it. Um, and so anyway, warming up, it's important. And something mm -hmm. else that I'd like to, you know, to go over with you all, and maybe this will 
feel free to join in or not if you you know if you like but um yeah oh yes there we go yeah um good morning everybody the drawing for tattooers we're doing some warm-ups and then also uh i wanted to talk about stretching a lot of times so you know we're kind of talking about like uh all these drawing you know ideas and um and a lot of us you know we're you know we do tattoos all of us here we do tattoos but then also you know a lot of people that watch us uh, they love drawing or they do tattoos also so you got to take care of your of your hands right you got to take care so uh so stretching here's just a couple of stretches that i've been doing lately and i and i find it's really it's really been quite helpful for me um so uh so here's one so you know ex let's see if i can get on the camera right so I'm going to extend my extend my arm out and I'm going to I'm just going to I'm going to pull back on my on my fingers just kind of hold it. it it shouldn't hurt right if it hurts it's too much right if it's, it's hurting you it's too much but uh but just a little it bit of like sure. yeah just extend and you're just you're just hold just hold it for you know 20 seconds if you can right yeah, just stretch it out uh and then since we do tattoos right we want to we want to make sure that that we're doing both right we want to do both because you got your tattoo in hand and then you have your stretching hand right so just stretch it out right just a just a light pressure right if that's if that's too much you can actually you know you can actually sort of make the fist and then you can you know you can pull back on that that's going to give you just uh just a little a little bit of a lighter stretch just hold it for a little bit Okay, very good. Uh, and then, so same same sort of idea, but instead of you know up, we want to go down, right? So uh, yeah, I believe this is the this is the flexors, right? You're stretching flexors, so this is the extensors. So we want to stretch that out, right? So these little muscles in your forearm, right? So down, and then we just want to give a little bit of just a light pressure. They do the same thing to stretch and dance for your feet. We flex should, and then point and then flex and then point. We should be flexing the feet probably too, right? And then so uh, um, the opposite is true with this with this stretch, right? So with this, uh, with, you know, flexing, you know, the extensors, stretching those out, if you make a fist and then pull that, it's actually going to give you more resistance, right? So that just, again, it shouldn't hurt, right? Don't, don't, don't overdo it, but just a little bit of light stretching because we warmed up, you warm up first, and then you do a little stretch. Um, you know, you can you can also sort of you know warm up the shoulders a bit. I tattooed yesterday. Um, it was on a it was on a back. I was tattooing a back, and I really noticed. You know, it was like it didn't take very long, but I really noticed my posture. I became very aware of this. You know, this idea of like. I've been, well, I've been hearing it. it's 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 a meme right now. The shrimp back, right? Have you seen it? Like people all hunched over, they get they look like a shrimp. Uh, <laughs> and it's the, the it's funny, but of course it's like it it hurts so bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And especially if you're doing work like that, you're laboring, tattooing, or whatever, you could be all hunched over, and you're so focused on what you're doing, you don't notice that you're injuring yourself. You're doing yourself wrong. You know so uh it, it it will be uncomfortable right but something that i think is helpful and we get from uh there's a there's an idea from uh stretching right it's called alexander technique this person named alexander came up with it <laughs> anyway so the idea is to think up right so think up what does that mean like so imagine that your head is like a, a balloon that's going to float away right that like automatically helps your neck posture right and then if you're going to be you know if you have to get down a little lower try your best to really you know really bend at the core right to, to, to flex at the hips rather than rather than to sort of crane your crane your back over you know get all hunched up and all tight right so again there's going to be a lot of micro movements that we're going to use our wrists for but using your you know trying to use your body one more tip muscles, if yeah. you're gonna bend at the waist instead of hunching your back, roll your hips forward first. 
That's nice. I like that. Otherwise, you can pinch your sciatic nerve. I think that's that's very good advice. I mean, we have to we have to really be considerate of our bodies. We've got to use them for our whole life. Um, and I believe it's going to make your tattoos better. See, I'll, uh, does anybody use that, uh, those, that armrest, um, where it's, oh, like it's, it's, it's big. It's like a big armrest that you can just like yeah. lean completely onto. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, those are the, I think those are really, really great, um, tools, um, that have just done. Like I got one recently and it's been great. I mean, I, I've, I've had it for a few years, I'll say, but I, I've gotten with it recently in my career and I've been able to say that the difference between this and those those little arm wraps is just a big difference. Hmm. A lot. Mm -hmm. I use a larger You're one. Now. your arms more. Yeah, I think it's a really good idea because it, uh, it prevents you from hunching over too much because you're able to stop at a certain point and draw from it there. Mm -hmm. so, like I, I see the huge benefit in that spirit. Thank you, man. Yeah, I've been debating on that, but I didn't even think about that. Oh yeah, I put one in my Amazon wish list. Yeah, yeah the, G, the, the GG workshop. Um, like for I think they're like I don't know I don't know how much they are, but um, when I got it, I mean it was I want to say like two three hundred. Oh, hey, what's up? That's nice. <laughs> Uh, it was like two something, two hundred and something last time I looked. It could be different now, but yeah, I mean, I can't. I mean, the amount of it, it, it might as well have been free um, for the amount of work that I get. Yeah, they might as well, they might as well have paid me to get it at that two hundred. With the amount of usage I get from it, um, the, the two hundred dollar mark is like they should have paid me to use their product. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if, and if you're listening, uh, GG Workshop, uh, y'all did it. Y'all did the damn thing <laughs> with that. <laughs> I think that's. Uh, I love that. You know, and 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 that's. I think a, a big part of the point. You know, we we come here to to really share ideas and, um, you know, share information with each other. Uh, there's always going to be something that we can learn from one another. And there's always going to be, uh, you know, something that you can share something that really works for you. Um, Hey, Jason Leeser. Good morning. Morning, Jason. Good morning, guys. Uh, Jason. So I, just, I was listening in on YouTube and thought I'd drop in and make a comment. Um, okay. uh, straight to Amber's point with the rolling the hips. Um, that actually is critical. Uh, I was talking to someone that worked in the ergonomic field um, a few years back about, you know, problems that plague the industry, et cetera, et cetera. And they said, one thing you can do is pick up a saddle stool, right? Um, it's something that a lot of like doctors, chiropractors, massage therapists, a lot of people are starting to pick those up because it's naturally gonna slant your legs out. So it's more like you're standing to begin with. And it will force you to sit with straighter back, straighter posture. And I mean, you still always have the ability to lean forward, but I'm telling you, it. I've never had back issues. I've never had back pain. I'm never caught with shrimp back. I'm never you know, leaning too far over my client unless I have to stand. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not the most vertically gifted person in the world. Um, so there are some of my clients, even to get to their upper deltoid, I got to stand up because some of the people I tattoo are really, really tall. So, you know, but other than that, um, I turned my one coworker, Chris, onto it. Um, and I had an extra one laying around and I was like, listen, try it out. Give it a shot. If you don't like it, no harm, no foul, right? But at least you tried it. And now he swears by it. And he, he won't use like a regular flat stool anymore. Um, a lot of it comes down to, as Amber was saying, hip placement, right? 
and the angle mm -hmm. of your hips and a natural position for the human body. Humans are not meant to sit on flat surfaces for long periods of time. We're not. Um, oh, it does some, it forces us to sit with a more slouched posture. But if our feet and hips are angled down at an angle in a more natural way, it automatically forces us to sit with a straighter lower back. So, and those GG workshop armrests, by the way, mwah, beautiful. Whoever invented those, thank you. For real. I've had one for a while now, dude. I love them. Even the smaller version, like the, they've got the XL and the double XL. I've got the smaller of the two. It's not like four foot wide or anything, but you know, it's still 18 inches wide by 16 inches tall. Absolute blessing. They're a pain in the butt to wrap, but they're an absolute blessing. So no, like, uh, so what is it, uh, what is it about them that you find uh, so useful? They're just, they're just a larger surface. You can support your own body on it. Is that kind of what we're, what you all are saying? All of yeah. that and more. Okay. They're more sturdy. Um, mm -hmm. You can change them to any angle. If you position mm -hmm. the supports correctly, you can actually give it a little bit more distance to your client as they're sitting in the chair. Um, I'm not a big fan of how thick they are, but it is pretty beyond thick, that, yeah. probably, I mean, they are, they're like pretty, pretty hefty. They're not heavy, but they've got so much padding on them that sometimes it can be a little bit cumbersome. Um, but yeah, the fact that you can support yourself the fact that you can use them for legs as well, uh, which is very handy. Um, I'll do, I'll have my clients sit on a chair and I'll angle that if I'm working on their shin or their knee and I'll have, I'll have the armrest at an angle and I'll drape their whole leg right over top of them with no issues. Um, yeah. It can also come in handy if you're doing a throat, have them lay down on the massage table and you butt that armrest right up to the back of their neck have them lay with their head back. That way their head and neck is supported. And that way you still have something to lean on as you're working to help stabilize yourself, you know? So it makes them more comfortable, makes your job easier. There's a lot of different, I also use mine as a drawing and a painting table. Mm. That's huge. Right. You, you got that much room for it, definitely. You know, so, I mean, People will come over and they're like, oh, are, are you, what are you doing? And I'll have my little like, you know, 18 inch wide armrest set up at an angle and I'm sitting there on my iPad sketching and stuff. And yeah, it's got a lot of different purposes and uses. You can use it for almost anything. It's great. I have a question. When you said that you have difficulty wrapping it, have you ever considered using a trash bag to put over the top of it and then put a bib on top of that? So for a while, I would take trash can liners, cut the bottoms off. You know how they're all like heat fused at the bottom. Yeah. I would cut that off so they were big squares uh -huh. and then cut them down the side, basically cut them in half. And I would use one of those and just kind of tape it down. Uh -huh. um, recently, I picked up a large 18 inch long roll of shrink wrap, like clear stretch wrap. Mm -hmm. And so now for me, it's you tuck the one end and just stretch this big roll over top of it and it'll cover the whole thing. Yep, I use a uh, 24 inch rolls. Okay. I, have a, I have a mount on my toolbox, so it sits kind of so on it. So I can just pull the sheets out. Makes for That's a nice smart. portable. Mm -hmm. That's and, real smart. Uh, thank you. I started using the trash bag because it was way faster. Mm -hmm. It's so sanitary. You put it over it. You don't have to do anything. There's no wrapping. It just goes over top of the whole thing. And then I tape the bib nap down because, well, it keeps the mess down and it looks nice. So that using trash bags as barriers reminded me of a time in my apprenticeship. Um, we used to use those a lot for massage tables. We would get like the big, hefty, like black trash bags. Yeah. And they no. showed me exactly how to cut them for exactly the size that they needed. My job was to cut them in the appropriate sizes. And then they're like, okay, now we need you to make two stacks, a stack of seven and stack of 13. 
And I was like, okay. And they're like, don't ask, just do it. We need seven and 13, seven and 13. I was like, okay, sure. Yeah. All right. And of course, after that, they took both, both stacks, stacked them on top of each other and, you know, Right. Yeah. For absolutely no reason <laughs> other than to give me menial tasks, but it did the trick. Um, but yeah, it was that's we used to use those for uh massage table liners all the time. Um mm -hmm. they work great too. Yeah. I did that for a while. I uh my nurse, I have a nurse that works with me, and uh she has upgraded our uh, equipment to all medical grades. So we use bed bibs, bed, bed bib liners. And there's, they're very effective. Yes. Yeah, there is something. Uh, where do you get yours from? Something I'm about done. the, go ahead, go ahead, Spirit. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was in some, where do you get your bed bib from? I'm not sure. She procures them. Uh, where she procures them from, but uh, they're medical grade. She might get them from Amazon. Mm -hmm. Black market. You get a lot of medical grade stuff on Amazon. It, that's probably yeah, that's true. True. That's that's all my Amazon. inventory. <laughs> I was going to say, there's something about the the experience. You know what I mean? It's, you know, you you go all out for the your client, and you give them you know this medical grade stuff. Um, I think it enhances it, but it is probably best. You know what I mean? Like it's best to do a best practice, you know, like mm -hmm. whatever you can do, you know, to, to make it actually safe. But it is important that it's, uh, you know, it's, it is, uh, you know, an aesthetic experience, mm -hmm. you know, the, like, yeah, that's weird. because we can't be uh, uh, like, like perfectly sterile, right? No. It's not, mm -hmm. that's not achievable. You know what I mean? We want to do our best. And then of course, like I think the rest of it too is like there's a you know, there's a certain beauty beauty to it. it has to be uh -huh. it has to be attractive and beautiful so people feel comfortable. And then of course, like, you know, through that hopefully you are uh, you know, also doing the, you know, your absolute best to to make it to make it as clean as you possibly can. Spirit, it looks like you're at the pet, the pet store. Dad looks yeah. like a baby chinchilla. Oh, this is what this is actually uh this is me i'm i'm this chinchilla this is this is i'm inside of this cage uh sitting here uh eating is that your spirit food. animal no no what do you mean this is me i'm, I'm talking <laughs> to you from the kid the cage here uh just eating this delicious food here i got my yeah, assistant yeah, yeah, yeah. on camera i love chinchillas i had one for a long time named chibi his name hey, is chibi here, can I have you turn your camera to the side for me? That oh, <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, that's better. We did it. So cute, yeah. adorable. Mm -hmm. Oh, good job, baby. What it's a challenge! A sketch. You're gonna sketch this guy. Oh yeah. You such a challenge. Oh yeah, that would be kind of cool. Huh? Sweet. So, I have a question. I uh, in in the the process of opening up a tattoo studio in a mall nice. in Marion, Ohio. It has nice. four tattoo uh, full size tattooist chairs, uh, two flash chairs, and ten art training apprenticeship chairs. There's reasons for all of that. There's a lot to it. Um, but the grand opening, which I'm working out to have live music on a Saturday all day for the grand ribbon cutting, I would like to request that, um, if anybody would want to come and do flash tattoos for the day for fun, be more than welcome. Okay. Um, to say That's an awesome idea. Sounds great. Thank you. So, uh, so you get it. You're you're getting everything uh, in order. Then you're going to open up your own place. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it's it's extremely nice. It's all oak wood. It's an open uh, platform that has a divider in the center. 
It's emerald green, looks like money. It has two bathrooms uh, with wheelchair access, a back room. Um, it was an old hair boutique for a very long time, but now I'm in the process of doing all that. I have everything set up. I have all the employees set up. I have almost all of the apprenticeship chairs set up. It's a humongous deal. And uh, I, I would, Mr. James, can, can I formally ask you, sir, to come and do Flash for Fun on a Saturday, possibly? Uh, yeah, give me a, you know, shoot me some details. And um, yes, yeah, definitely, definitely want to support you. You know what I mean? You're, you know, you're part of our, you're part of our community. And I'm, you know, I'm really excited that you are like, you know, moving forward. Um, and so anyway, yeah, no, I'd love to give me some more details and I'd love to, you know, absolutely to see, see the new place. Absolutely. Uh, is it going awesome. to be Creatures yeah. Cave, the tattoo experience? <laughs> 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 Yeah, Creature, Creatures Cave. It'll be at South Lynn Mall in Marion, Ohio. Um, the area is opening up. There. The business uh, plan is already set up. The, we're supposed to have an influx of almost a million people come to Columbus, Ohio over the next 10 years. And the business models in town, they're adding two lanes to a highway to make it a four lane. They're going to build up that entire area. So I've accidentally, if you will, stumbled in to a, something very nice. And uh, how do you my, accidentally stumble into something like that? Um, skill set, mindset, and opportunity. Amen to that. That's, That's hard it. work. That's not luck. Right, right. You make That's it. hard work. You make your luck. You make your grace you by working your butt off. So, uh, yeah, it's a 14 chair studio and 10 of them chairs uh, I'm not allowed to tattoo in because of the, the setup. Um, so I'm going to be being an instructor uh, and teaching people the proper ways to do things, starting from the very basics of fundamentals. And we will be live streaming Reinventing Tattoo 24-7 when we're opening and I will have it set up so we can turn the cameras on on Monday mornings and you'll be able to see the people there and interact if you choose to. Um, it's going to be the full experience and I have lawyers in New York working on it. I have a, uh, 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 business partners that are all in. I have artists and musicians. I have everything set up. And I love it. Just it. Kind of came together. That's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. That's extremely exciting. Thank you. I'm. I I'm mean, very tattoo excited. shops have to start somehow. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, they mm -hmm. have to. They don't. They don't come from nowhere. And so I'm starting um, to think that's what I'm <laughs> going to have to do to get my two thousand hours in. Mm. Yeah, it is, it is true. Oh, yeah. There are, it's so different everywhere you go. The rules are so different. It is, you know. I, know. I wish it was just standardized. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's, it is a, uh, it is a real labyrinth. You know what I mean? To try to, to try to, to do it above board where you're at. Uh, but of course, you know, you want to, you want to, you know, hopefully give this, practice to the next generation of tattooers that are going to like, you know, treat it with respect and they're going to like, they're going to do a good job. They're going to keep people safe, right? They're going to like do this, uh, um, do this to the best of their ability. Um, so anyway, I guess it's, uh, um, it is tough like to know how to, you know, what is, what is the right direction, you know, for yourself and for your, uh, you know, the people that you are, mentoring and, and so on and so forth um, but again it's it has to start somewhere you know what i mean so uh i'm gonna i'm gonna wish i'm gonna wish you luck best of luck mm -hmm. us all you know what i mean awesome. that's, that's very cool. Congratulations. Yeah, very cool. if you guys have any uh feedback direction or um a process that you would recommend for training people that would like to be tattoo artists that could go from zero 
to a professional, competent artist with all their certs. If you're interested in, in throwing information out there, I will always take more information and adapt my model to make it better. So I've got, uh, I've got an idea for you. Have you ever seen Highlander the Quickening? Yes. Right there. That's all you need to do. Perfect. We could just have them throw down right in the middle for that one That's what chance. I'm saying. Enough. Ignite the flaming ring of death to go in, one comes oh, out, and they absorb the other person's power. <laughs> I love it. How are you doing? Well, it is a uh, um so not to, you know, there's some things that we're not we're not supposed to talk about, you know, but in the APT, we're talking about the curriculum for you know for educating um you know apprentices and stuff. And I think that the you know, what, what, what we are coming up with or what we're sort of coming to is this idea of like, there's a difference between an apprentice and a student. There, there's a big difference, right? right? And a student would be in a classroom and you'd have lots of them. And, you know, it's basically like, there's probably a dissemination of information, some projects, and then, you know, you sort of, you can demonstrate some stuff. But an apprenticeship is, is this one-on-one -on -one mentorship. You know what I mean? It's this, it's this, there's a specialized degree of attention that you receive as an apprentice from your, from your mentor. And so the whole idea is that you, you know, like there aren't as many apprentices per, yes. you know, you know um, let's, let's call uh, it a master or something like that. And so the, um, now it doesn't, doesn't mean that you can't have systems of education that will be helpful for, you know, uh, for people who are learning the ropes. And so there are, you know, right now, I, a couple come to mind. Reinventing the Tattoo is a, you know, I think is a really great program. You get the, you know, you get access to the book, Reinventing the Tattoo. And then of course, there's a community of drawing where you get feedback and you get, you know, some study assignments. Another one, uh, which I recently joined and, and I found it, you know, I've, I've found a lot of really, you know, I think there's a lot of great resources in it is, is uh, Fireside Network, Jake Meeks. Oh, yeah. Jake. Very Love Jake. Cool. I've been following yeah. them since the beginning. I have his autograph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a chance to meet Jake Meeks in person at the, uh, at the Paradise Tattoo Gathering. I got a chance to meet Jason Leeser in person. I met Kyle Olson in person. Nice. No, I got to meet a lot of people. You met the Kyle Olson? No. The Kyle Olson. Kyle Olson was there in person. It was wow. epic. Oh, wow. <laughs> you <laughs> and you tattooed Pastor Neck, right? So <laughs> Yeah, tattooed Pastor. Yeah. Nice. That dude is a goofy, goofy guy, man. Everything. <laughs> Holy cow! I hope man. he's watching. I think he would appreciate that. Even you know what I mean? It's uh, he's, he's fun. He's <laughs> what a cast characters. He's fun to hang out with. Cool. It was a really great experience, and that. So again, talking about the education, that's a that's a it's a program. I I believe they're I believe they're going to do it again. Jake and okay. Gabe put on a great show, and they're going to do it again next year. Um, because there was a real outpouring, I think, of support, like right at the end, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really, I really feel like they were, you know, they were still in the decision process. Are we going to do this again? Cause it's a lot of work to put on a, you know, your own show. Mm -hmm. Was but, this the first one? No, it's the first one since they, since they, they had to go, it had to stop. I think probably because of COVID and stuff, you know what I mean? All the, everything kind of stopped. So they hadn't really. They, they did one called the BYOB and then I think they did a virtual one, but, but anyway, this was a, uh, this was full on in-person event and there was a lot of really fantastic artists and they were doing seminars all weekend. Jason Leeser was doing seminars, um, on procreate and what other, what other seminars did you do, Jason? I did one on, um, printmaking and getting images ready for making prints of your artwork whether it's digital or analog. Um, I put on a whole presentation for that. Uh, that was good. And then I did um, the Procreate seminar as well. And that one got way bigger turnout than I thought it was going to. So that was really nice. 
Um, everyone that attended got a two free brush sets that I've spent about two years curating and creating. So hopefully those get put to some good use. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's actually going to be expanding. That was the first, first edition of it, but yeah, it was great. Uh, took a couple of other seminars while I was there. It was absolutely awesome time. Um, the cover up seminar was really, really informative, really like that. Um, Andy Chambers was there. I took his seminar. That was incredible. Uh, just a different way to look at laying out a full sleeve. So I think I'm going to start applying some of what I learned there um, to, to everything else I'm doing. Yeah, it was a great time. You, you, did, uh, you did a hell of a job, Jason. You were everywhere. You were helping out everybody. Hell of an MC, dude. You did, you did fucking awesome. It was, it was cool to see. It was cool to watch, man. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect to be called out by Jake to come up and talk during the last panel. <laughs> that kind of threw me off. I, I think I was so deliriously tired at the time, running off of like four or five hours of sleep for yeah. multiple nights in a row. But yeah, that, that, that kind of caught me off guard. I don't remember a whole lot of what I said, but I think I did well, so... Yeah, yeah did, I did. know my uh, my Sunday afternoon drawing group that day was an absolute train wreck, but <laughs> it was a good time. Up, you know, good time. Yeah, you were you were everywhere setting up the drawing stuff, like the bodysuit stuff for everybody, um, after hours type of thing, doing that. Just yeah, yeah, you were everywhere and you were kicking ass, dude. Yeah, I'm actually going to be mailing those bodysuits back up to Gabe, um, uh -huh. so that he can auction those off uh, to help fund the next Paradise Gathering. Oh, cool. Yeah. And uh, cool. if all goes well, I'll have a series of prints run from the Biomech Collabs. Um, that should, I'm going to finish stitching those images together today. I was very happy the day after that on Sunday. I got a few minutes to sit back and actually like photograph those for reproduction. Um, so now I just have to stitch those photos together. Uh, make sure that everything's in the right color profile and whatnot. And then I can start running those off as prints uh, for people that didn't want them. I'm going to be sending a, a number of them up to Gabe to sell in support of the Paradise BYOB. Mm -hmm. uh, so should be a, uh, a great time. Uh, mm -hmm. Should help fund the next one if all goes well. Um, you never know, but yeah. I think with, uh, so i was talking to Jake about this and I had some ideas for other seminars for next year that I thought would be really beneficial. I'm not really going to, you know, say what they are, but uh, just because I, I haven't talked to anyone yet to get any kind of a commitment. I don't know if they're in line with the aesthetic of the paradise gathering. Um, so I wanted to run that past them first, but I've got some, some pretty awesome ideas for seminars that have never been done before uh, that I think people could really benefit from, especially people like us that, you know, maybe we want to start working on more collaborative tattooing, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe we want to focus on seminars dealing with specific styles, uh, neo-trad or black and gray realism, or stuff like that. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm actively, I've got a few people in mind that I think would definitely be interested in coming up and doing seminars on all of that. Uh, I might actually, I, I'm going to reach out to them and we'll find out, but um, I've got a couple of people I'm going to be talking to when I'm at Puerto Rico about coming out and doing seminars. Um, I was already talking to Anthony Tex about that a little bit, see if we can get him to come out for it, mm -hmm. uh, which I think would be phenomenal. I think that would just be absolutely incredible if we got him out, mm -hmm. um, you know, but different guys from different places, a couple of guys from San Diego, uh, maybe getting Terry Rabir to fly out and do a whole uh, bodysuit and back piece composition seminar. I think that would be cool. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of potential out there and a lot of people want to share their information. It's mm -hmm. just a matter of, finding people that know them to ask them. And then, you know, basically turning around and saying, listen, you've got the time now 
to book that and put that into your schedule. If you want to be a part of this, we can do it. Here's your advance notice. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I was talking to um, a couple of guys at Pagoda city uh, about maybe coming up to paradise and doing a collaborate, a collaboration seminar. Right. Cause these are two guys that have collaborated multiple times on multiple tattoos. They've got different unique styles that work so well together that there's never any kind of miscommunication. There's never any kind of disagreement. They've got a plan. They, they communicate really well. You know, how do they go through? And we're not talking a big back piece. We're talking like a thigh piece. Not no a big disagreement. Area to work. How is that any fun? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That doesn't sound like any fun at all. You got to. I mean, I I would prefer to do a back piece personally, but um, you know, I'll collaborate on almost any tattoo with anyone. So, Um, but you know, getting seminar unique seminars like that, uh, maybe seminars on contrast, strictly on a super high contrast tattooing. Mm. Importance of it. So that's so interesting that. All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it. That leads me right into something that I really want to talk about today. So let me just uh, let me just uh, dive into this real quick. Uh, just a just a something to uh, just a, just a topic that I was interested in, and um, and I think it's I think it's very useful for us. Uh, and so it's this idea, right? Um, here we go. We've probably all seen this. Oh, I know this one. It's illusion before, right? Um, and so the whole point of it is that these two squares that are marked A and B, they're actually the same tone, right? What? We can. We I can, don't believe it. You don't yeah. believe it, right? So let, let, we can test I don't it. Believe it. No, you, it's impossible. You know, it's not. It's not possible, right? So I just selected just to do it. Color select of B. I'm gonna I'll use, I'll use a different pen, so it's going to be whoop, a little bit more. Clearly, B is lighter than A because it is in between those gray squares. Let's try it out. So, so that's so. This is the this one is this one is B. B. This one's B. I selected it. So let's select A. We'll do a color match. Let's let's try it out. A little, a little larger. Bam. That one is A. What? what? Oh my God. Mind blown. Magic. Magic. I love this game. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> yes, it is. What's going on here, gang? Do I, <laughs> uh, it does. It, 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 like, it, it really, uh, it seems so counterintuitive. But what is, uh, you know, what is, does anybody have any insights here? Like I said, we've all, we all have seen this before. We know it. Um, and then I think usually like people just sort of say, yeah, they're the same. You know, you know what I mean? But like really putting them right next to each other, you can really tell that they are the, they're the same, right? B mm-hmm. and A, they are the, they are the same. So what is, what is the magic here? Um, it's what's surrounding it. So with A, it's the darker out of the area. And then B, it's the lighter out of the area. So it, the brain just kind of, you know, flips it to where, I don't know, it's just like how colors interact with each other and values interact with each other. Say if you do one color and you put a, you know, one color around it, like exactly what's going on. And you take the same color and you put something around something darker, just like the con... My brain fart, you guys. Uh, fuck. Next. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you did so better I than I could do. So um, there, it's, it's, there's a word for it. Um, where this, It's something that your brain actually does. Whereas if you look at a, let's say if you were to look at a value scale, um, like, or even if you were to zoom in to where the light squares meet the gray squares, right at the edge, you'll see where where the darker meets the lighter, the darker will be darker and the lighter will be lighter. So there's this optical illusion that happens that, that, that it's almost like it, your brain makes 
you see edges? Um, not that one. The one with the squares. Try the one with the squares. I don't know if I, I don't know if I have that one up. Uh, but we can, you know, we can go back to this for a second. But it, yes, I, exactly what you're talking about. Um, that there, the the word that I like for this. There's a lot of words for this, but the word I like, the term for that I like is simultaneous contrast. And so it's the same tone, but again, just like Kyle was talking about spirit, just like you're talking about, as, as soon as it's contextualized, we have to organize it in some way. And so, again, I think, you know, like if, if we were to say that like these squares are, you know, it's black squares and white squares or whatever, you know, you, you make them black, you make them white. Before you know it, you just, you're just totally out of room. There's just no space, you know, to, to add any nuance, to add any subtlety. And so, um, luckily, uh, we're still able to perceive it, right? And so the way that our, the way that our, you know, our senses work, our sensory perception works, is it's, it's either on or off, right? Like as your, you know, as, as your, uh, as your senses are stimulated, right? It's either, it's, it's, a, it's an on or an off. And through all of the different, what's that? Go ahead. No, no, you're good. I'm at the drive through. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. But, but, but through all of that information, we come up with a, with a picture, right? We are organizing it in our imaginations. And that's why we end up sort of uh, having this phenomenon happen. And so, yeah, so this one too, I think is, you know, this one is, uh, this one I think can be very, uh, you know, telling. Like you can have this same tone, right? You put it next to yeah, dark, you put it next to too. light, and it gives you, uh, you know, it gives you a, a variety. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that one. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. um, huh. yeah, like, if, like if you zoom in like right up to where the dark touches the, it just seems to be this radiation. You can even see it on the, on the yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. That there are, uh, you know, this, this appears, there's quite a bit of contrast, especially at this edge, you know, it gets, it gets much more, it gets much closer as it starts to diminish. And then the same can be true over here on this side. You know, again, we have, we have a lot of high degree of contrast by comparison. You know what I mean? It's not the full range of value, not the whole, not the whole thing. But as a, you know, it, is positive there a, and negative. Go ahead. Is there a color version of that where it shows chroma and how it does the same thing? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm looking at one right now. Yeah, there, there are, uh, there are definitely color versions of it, and that's, Ooh. I think, that's so crucial to see through the color and think about its value. Right to see that, like that, each color, even though it is intense, it's going to have a tonal value, and so basically, um, that's going to be the most important thing. That the color lays on top of value. You can increase the contrast through a color relationship, especially like a warm and a cool, that sort of a thing. But having this dialed in, that's going to be. Uh, I think that's really going to be useful. Kyle, did you say you you Found an yeah, example. Let me, pop, let me turn you OBS on. You want to share on. it? Here, let me let me let you uh I gotta turn OBS here. on first. Um it's a simple one, it's nothing crazy. OBS is popping up. Two seconds. No problem. Is everybody thinking about their posture? All right, let's see. I wanna let me spotlight it so that way. Um Thank you so much for that patience. I'm so sorry about that. What else can I get? What can I get? So, Brian? yeah, that's that's kind of the same thing. It's like it's it's what's surrounding the one the one value or color, you know, because like in this one, it's going to look darker and this one, it's going to look lighter because of like it's it's counterparts or whatever the hell you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, could then, you change this one to grayscale for us? Yeah, that's that, just that something easy. you could do real quick. Beautiful. Wow.
And so I think that like, you know, certainly like a, an issue that I, I know that I run into and I always, I'm always trying to be on the lookout for it. You know, if you're trying to color match, you know, from a, you know, from a reference or something like that, it's easy to sort of get fixated on one point of color. You know what I mean? And like, that's the color. And then it's like the value is all, it, the value is not the, uh, it's not accurate, let's say. Right. And then when you get done with it, you're like, what's wrong with my with my colorful drawing, colorful tattoo, whatever. And I think this is the this is the if you want to call it a secret behind it, I think this Kyle is really showing us here exactly the, you know, what what lies behind it. Right. It's this <clears throat> idea of that every color, even though it is intense, has a, has a certain chroma. It has a, a value. That's going to be associated with it. Um, so getting that tonal value scheme organized, it's going to be so valuable for you. So thank you for doing that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the the saying that like uh, value does all the work and color gets all the credit. Um, so. Mm. <laughs> so. I definitely, you know, sticks to mind to where um, the how important the value is on variances, like especially if you're trying to do like smooth color blends or you know just making sure that your your stuff is dynamic enough. It's not so much like the the pre made colors out of the tattoo inks and stuff like that. It's just like really being like, well, I want this power blue, but I need it to be just a bit darker, so I'm going to take this like blue concentrate or something. And just darken it up because it's like I need it to be darker, but I don't, you know, because like even all these are not even solid black at all. Um, okay, cool. As long as I, I think so, that's mm -hmm. not that, 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 that not look. That does it's not look close, black yeah. at all. Crazy. Yeah, it's a little, yeah, different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. Well, this, you know, I think that this exactly this topic, you know, is something um, Killian Moon was talking about at Paradise. And that is when you're working on melanated skin, like you can't always rely on white. You know, mm -hmm. in fact, you know, Killian says, you know, that his philosophy is that, you know, don't ever use white. <laughs> don't ever use whiting, ever. You yeah. just just contrast just the skin and uh and you're just building up tones and stuff um and so i guess i'm you know it's like you have to approach every individual you know what i mean as uh their what are their needs you know what is the the needs of this your particular client uh, you know mm -hmm. in this particular project mm -hmm. but it's uh it is really challenging and you you can't always, it has to be an interpretation, let's say, right? Like trying to directly, you know, input something in that it, it just doesn't fit exactly that way. You may have to use some interpretation. You may have to use some, uh, uh, some artistic license in order to achieve the, you know, the ends that you're, that you're going for. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's I think it's a uh, it's a big part it's of our channel. Not easy sometimes either telling the client, telling the client. You know. um, I'm I'm dealing with a client right now um, who's um, who's the, so we we call it which basically there's categories there's peanut butter caramel and chocolate so it's peanut butter uh, I'm sorry butter pecan butter pecan caramel and chocolate butter pecan is like you know very very light skin kind of in the yellow. Um, registry kind of like sh people like Sade and stuff like that, and then there's caramel, which is like Cardi B, uh, and then there's Cardi B, and then there's chocolate, which is like Willie Snipes, Whoopi Goldberg, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm just thank you. Yeah, I'm just dealing with that right now. Like she wants she wants purple in the tattoo, and I'm just like, and she's cho chocolate. I'm just like, oh yeah, that's not gonna work. It's not going to have the effect that you think it's gonna have. You know, and she's like. I want it, I want it, I want it. I'm just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not going to just sit here and scar your skin up just Sorry, because you think it's gonna look pretty. You know what I mean? Spirit, do you stick with a uh, red and green color palette 
when working on any, any of the darker tones. All right. Thanks so much. Um, just a second. Certainly. I've, um, had to, I've had to limit down my palette to basically four. Uh, my wife, uh, she's more of a caramel, if you will. So I've adjusted my uh, values, my grayscale, to basically black, mid-tone, open skin. And then I use, um, I don't know, I, I use, a, uh, well, it'd be a light red and a raw green from the raw pigment line. And that gives me some really nice uh, uh, tones after it all heals. I like uh I like uh turquoises and salmon too. If I if I ever want to uh, kind of just you know do a little something different, do a little razzle dazzle, mm -hmm. um, I'll do the tur I'll do turquoise. Um, you know because the green supports the blue in the skin. Um, and I get it. You know, okay. yeah. A lot of us have kind of like reddish undertones as well, so. Mm -hmm. and that's going to help the, that red pop. And then there's a salmon, um, or the, I, I guess it's salmon because of the color. But um, yeah. so there's a salmon. Um, Eternal makes a good salmon. Um, and that's just good. For, it, 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 there's a slight orange hue to it, so it just kind of gives a different type of uh, um, appeal to it. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm about to start looking into vermilion because I've been painting a bit and uh, I just discovered vermilion and I'm like this is pretty I wonder what it looks like a skin so uh, yeah to answer your question yeah yeah thank you okay. I'll add that too so with with like as the 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 value scale. Um, like as like skin gets more melanated, is it to where like it's like your value scale goes down to where it's like the the more melanin and like the the darker the skin goes, is it to where it's like this is as light as I should go type of thing, or like that's as light as I can go because of the skin tone and stuff like that? Is that a basically? Thing? I would okay. uh, I would think of the skin tone itself as as the values. If you could, yeah, if you could just think of the skin itself as the base value. Uh-huh. Yep, that's what I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um you know, I mean granted you can get it darker, uh, but only by the value that Yeah, that's a good question. I guess you because I guess when you what you think about it, like once you can get you can put the black into the skin, but it doesn't get any lighter than the skin. So is so it can get so it could get dark. so the black the skin is the highlight the skin is the lighter part of the you know what I mean yeah 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 I'm just, yeah yep yeah so when we take our concept of simultaneous contrast you know what I mean like <laughs> we have to be extra careful you know once I, if if we are uh, you know we're really limiting you know the range of value that we're using um, and so I think it can it. It really is crucial. It really has to be, you know, like the most important thing. Tonal value, you know, something that my teacher used to tell me, and it's uh, it proves to be exactly. It proves to be, you know, um, time and time again, the most important thing that you consider tonal value. Which again, I think another way of, of saying it is positive and negative uh, relationship. Hmm. Positive negative and you have this uh um you're having a it's a relationship of tonality and of course you know so contrast is about difference and then we can develop more difference and more contrast through lots of different ways but ultimately there's a tone plan that is going to enable somebody to be able to see anything at all because again like we were talking about like you know the way that you're the way that your neurons, uh, you know, receive the signal, it's on or off. It's, 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 it's going to be dark. It's going to be light. It's something like that. And then overall through all of the, the sensory perceptional information that you receive, you, 
you construct a picture in your imagination. And so if you want to have any say <laughs> so in what's going on, there's going to be there's going to be contrast that's going to have to be inherently, you know, uh, deployed in this uh, in this situation. And um, it's so again, I think something that I'm I'm always working on myself, and it's I and that's what I hope that you all feel the same way. You know, you can always make it more sophisticated, right? You can always make it more uh, complex if you like. But ultimately, it does boil down to, um, I think, to that. I think that's going to be, you know, that's the fundamental of it. That's the principle of our vision, right, is the dark and the light. <laughs> we have to, you have to, pure light is nothing, pure dark, nothing, right? So you have to have, you know, sort of illuminated darkness or, or shaded light. <laughs> it has to be, that's the only way you're going to have any sort of content at all in your form. So. Um, I can, if I could say one thing, I think that, that, that's the thing I would say. Um, I believe in it. So, hmm. Kyle, I love your, uh, I love your uh, tonal value ranges that you gave us here. I think it's a nice way to sort of think about, you know, sort of reinforce what Spirit was saying as yeah. far as like having. There's a certain range that you're going to be allowed to have, you know, with anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all like, depending on their skin tone, it's like, well, I want this. And it's like, well, as much as we would both love for that to happen, I, my capabilities can only go so far. Like spirit was saying, you know, um, cause it's like, yeah, I want this big, amazing thing. And it's like, well, I I'm only allowed this much of the value scale. So it's going to be a little bit harder to pull that off. So like if we simplify it and stuff like that and make subtle changes, we can make that idea work for you. It's not going to be this exact same thing that we want, but um, so yeah. Um, I I try, go ahead. I personally, I personally tried to uh, tattoo a few Smurfs. Smurfs were going around. There was a bunch of people who wanted Smurfs. My wife would like wanted a Smurf, and I tried to explain to her that it wouldn't quite turn out the way she was hoping. And the blue I used, it pretty much now looks like a silhouette. And uh, if I put white in, it just it all heals like a silhouette, and there's no definitive detail. So I, I don't even I I didn't think I could even pull blue off in darker skin at all. Um, I, I think a part of what we're talking about, uh, sometimes like sometimes certain, certain skin types, skin tones can hyper pigment, right? They can become like where you put in the, you put in like very light ink, white, particularly, mm -hmm. it can actually get dark there instead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like this point where you're like hoping that it would be the lightest spot, it actually becomes much darker than you, you know, than, than if you'd left it open, if you just left it skin. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it is, uh, um, experience is going to give you this ability to make these discernments, I think. And it, it, that's all you can, it's all you can do is, yeah. uh, is learn from others. And then of course, you know, um, be as, be bold, but also be, you know, very considerate. Uh, and awares of what it is that is going on. So, you know, again, like, I think we're, you know, this is a, this is a great full circle for what we were talking about. We started off today really, you know, doing some sketching and doing some stretching, thinking about our, ourselves, our bodies, we have to take care of ourselves. So that way we can have longevity and endurance in this, uh, you know, in this practice, this tattooing that we love so much. Or anything. I mean, really, you could be typing at your computer all day and still you have to you have to be aware of it because you can do the same. You get that same, uh, you know, symptom of the shrimp back <laughs> if, you, if you're hunched mm -hmm. over all day, staring at your phone or whatever the hell you're doing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, we have to, you know, we want to be considerate of our of our clients, too, and their needs and, uh, you know, they may have to be, uh, they may have to sit in an uncomfortable position for a couple hours while we're doing our work, you know what I mean? But uh, 
but again, we want to make sure that we're uh, we're making the best choices um, and guiding them in, in the best way that we can. Um, so, so yeah, I think that was. Uh, I think this is a this is a great this is a great point to for us to to leave it at today. Hey, I didn't do our announcements. I, <laughs> it's <laughs> late. We'll have to. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks, guy. I'm gonna. <laughs> thanks, Gabe. Yeah. Thanks, um, guy. Yeah, thanks, Gabe. Thanks, Guy. This is, uh, of course, we appreciate um, reinventing for allowing us the space to uh, to have have this little meetup, this little group that we do. And of course, for me, I'm you know, I'm so grateful that everybody could make it today. Um, why don't we just uh, let's do a couple of of, uh, of quick sign offs and then? Man, uh, we're doing sign offs already. Right right yeah, we're I know, doctors. right? It's it, 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 what. Day it flies by, flies by. Let's, Do we have uh, like an after hours James workshop thing? Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We do it uh Monday nights, the subscribers exclusive. <laughs> join, join Sandy and McAndrew, hey. Kyle, me, Jason comes sometimes. You know what I mean? We do the drawing every week. Um, and so. If you're not in a good drawing based, you know, like group challenge, I just want to encourage you to find one, you mm -hmm. know, like reinventing is a cool one. Fireside is a cool one, but there, there's lots, there's mm -hmm. lots of, you know, of, of, you know, sort of weekly drawing challenges where, you know, you can, you can work on your skills. You can get some feedback. It can be, I think, problematic to kind of tell, tell somebody just draw every day just draw mm -hmm. like yeah. you know and that can that can ultimately lead to burnout and to like you know sort of just pure frustration of course you should draw every day <laughs> but what i'm saying is that like it comes out of you know like out of out of this the the love of of doing these projects you know that you want to see in the world mm -hmm. so the drawing that i do every day again is like just doing those warm-ups right start doing those stretches everybody i think you know like doing that every day, warm up, then stretch, then do your, do your work. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to find it if, you know, with that order of operations, um, it's, it's, you're going to, I think you're going to feel better. You know, I just think uh -huh. it's going to, things are going to like probably. So what I find, <laughs> what I've been finding is the frustrations are, they roll off a little bit easier. <laughs> uh -huh. the, the frustrations don't stop, but it's like, eh, all right, you know, you, you can you can roll with the punches a little bit more easily. You know, that's just that's me. But anyway, I uh let's have uh let's have some some sign offs. Creature, uh give us your sign off. We'd love to we'd love to uh, know where to find you. Creatures Cave on every platform and Southland Mall, Marion, Ohio. I want to thank everybody for uh Helping me able to figure out how to do this. You guys have been a humongous support. So thank you. And uh, till next week. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Chris. And good luck mm -hmm. with your yeah. new endeavor. We are, yeah, I'm rooting for you. So Amber, how about you? As always, thank you very much for hosting every week. I love coming and our conversations are always enlightening. Thank you so much. My name is Amber Morgan. You can find me on all social media under Amber Morgan. Thank you, Amber. Uh, and uh, really hope that, really hope you can make it to uh, Paradise next year. I might be. I really, really want to go next year. I got to put money away, but I really want to go ne next year. This year's scheduling was just crazy. Totally. No, totally. I've been working uh, like every day. Totally fair. Uh, so yeah, and that's same for me. I mean, you got to save up for it. It's a great, it's a great experience. Um, but it, there's so much you can, I, there's so much that you can get from this uh, experience. Oh. So yeah, yeah, paradise is fantastic. Um, all right, let's see who's uh, Jason. You're next on my screen. Let me have you uh, tell us where we can find you. Uh, so you can find me on Instagram at Philly Inc. You can also find me every Sunday at 1 p.m. for the Skill Building Sunday Drawing Group here live on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. I tattoo out of the Inkwell Tattoo in Southampton, Pennsylvania. 
um, feel free to get in touch with me. I'm more than happy to uh, get anyone in. As uh, we know, we are approaching what I like to call painting season. Um, <laughs> because, Hell yeah. Yep. And those that know, know uh, painting mm -hmm. season is a real thing. So I've got a number of uh, painting projects I'll be working on this year. Um, James, I'm looking forward to Puerto Rico because uh, that's going to be amazing. We'll probably end up doing a little bit of live streaming there. So, yeah. Awesome. No, thank you so much for coming today. I'm looking forward to Puerto Rico Tattoo Convention. Um, yeah, I've never been to Puerto Rico, so I'm super excited. You know, it's going to be uh, – be quite experienced so amazing um, Bring anyway, your was, screen. yes yeah yeah definitely um but also uh it was it was it was great getting to to meet you in person at like paradise and and yeah thank you for all the jason one of the unsung heroes he put on all these drawing events at at the paradise tattoo gathering this uh this past weekend um and it really made it uh you know it made a real uh you know real community event so i want to i want to you know personal thanks to you jason uh spirit you're next on my i see you next on my screen so what's that what's that uh okay so um speaking of painting season i've been um so i've been working on some paintings because I, I uh oh crap i've been um what i'll do is if i have a big piece what i've been doing lately is i'll i'll turn the piece into a painting so that I'll, you know, teach myself how to paint and 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 just kind of familiarize myself. So instead of just doing the line drawing, I'll, I'll try to paint the piece to completion. So I'm working on this one now, and I wanted to get you guys as uh, input. So this is the. Um, hold on. Da, 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 da. So I put the piece together using AI, um, and I put it together on Procreate. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So he wanted to, the client yeah. wanted um thank you. Uh so nice. the client wanted like a uh, Viking slash soccer piece. Um so the this person is, is AI generated and then the, the helmet is AI as well. I got the axe from somewhere else and you know, but so basically I'm just trying to make sure that I um do everything correctly. You know what I'm saying? Um, because this doesn't really give me very much, you know. Um, so I'm just uh, doing that and working on the other one. I got this piece from, um, this is a piece I got from uh, Pinterest. So I do not claim here, I do not claim to have created the original, but it's working on this paint here. That's cool. Thanks. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, uh, yeah, so you know, um, she's gonna get it on her shoulder, and uh, so yeah, now I'm just, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm painting. You know what I mean? I'm doing paint, painting during painting season. You know, thanks, Kyle. I think, I think they're beautiful. Yeah, I think I think they're look there and they're but they're in progress. You know what I mean? So um, like, I can't wait to see them finished up. You know, they're going really well. Um, and I know that you know you and I were chatting about like paint. You know, how does yeah like what what are some of the you know the ways to think about it? And um, I you know for me I think you know something that came out of it is like this idea of outlines and paint. It can be tough to outline with a brush, you know, but it might be the thing that you do last if you're, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I know we had talked about that, but maybe this is something that, that other people are thinking about as well. You know, if you are going to do, you know, uh, if you're going to be using a brush to sort of block things in, perhaps the outline, if you want to have an outline on your, you know, your piece, that's something that you do at the end. Otherwise, you know, edges, an edge where it's sort of, it's dark against light. And then you, you know, sort of you block in that way. Maybe there's some gradient, maybe there's some simultaneous contrast. You know what I mean? It depends uh -huh. on the situation. Uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, no, these are, uh, I'm so glad that you shared these. I know that you, we were talking about, uh, I wanted you to share these 
today. So I'm yeah. Excited yeah. To see him. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Thanks for yeah. thanks for looking, guys. I appreciate. It. I, I I think I'm gonna keep doing this. It it um, you know, I uh, I've always wanted to paint. I've always wanted to know how to paint, and um, um, it just really kind of gives me something to do. Uh, it ha- you know, has has you know, and these are like little. It's like a little project. I'm just excited about. You know, I'm just excited mm-hmm. about seeing what it what it's gonna look like when it's finished. You know, mm-hmm. definitely. And, uh, you know, and the figuring it out, the, you know, because it's it's almost like, um, you know, uh, the, I'm I'm in the the place that I was afraid of being at, meaning I was afraid to start. I was afraid of having it be ugly. You know what I'm saying? I was afraid to, um, yeah. you know, to have issues with the paint, which I'm currently having. But it's all enjoyable. It's all very <laughs> like you know a part of the process. So I'm I'm in, I'm really enjoying it. Awesome. Yeah. Um. So, Spirit, where can we where can we find you or social media and follow you? You can follow me on um, all platforms, uh, Tattoos by Spirit on TikTok, Tattoos by Spirit on Instagram, and TattoosbySpirit.com. Whoa, whoa. Outstanding. Yeah, uh, I just saw, I saw this painting on TikTok, and I was like, oh, hearts, oh, giving word. hearts. So. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit. Um, okay. Kyle Olson, give us your sign-offs, if you wouldn't mind, please. Uh, my name is Senior Kyle Olson. Um, I tattoo out of Tucson, Arizona, in a shop called Trinity Art Collective. If you want to reach out, get a hold of me, um, you can definitely do it on Instagram at Olson, O-L-S-O-N, underscore tattoos, or uh, you can reach out on trinityartcollective.com. And both of those work great, and I'm more than happy to talk to anybody about anything um love art love it all uh side question real quick um when it comes to like seminars and educational things uh what about like the 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 science of like how the tattooing and like the epidermis and dermis and all that stuff uh do you feel like there's a need for that or is there something that's already uh there's or is there something already going on like that but Jake uh, Meek does a really nice uh, uh, tutorial. He goes through a bunch of things okay. on fire. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, cool. And so, and since, so anybody who has been uh, tattooing in Massachusetts lately <laughs> probably had to take the, you know, the anatomy course, you know, get an anatomy certification. At least I did. So yeah, there's like, you know, the integumentary system, skin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot there. For sure. Um, mm-hmm. And also, I want to, you know, I could recommend uh, this book. Hopefully, it's uh, it's the right way. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Science that. of Tattooing. This is, uh, this is a very cool book. And, and I do believe it does sort of go into the different layers of skin. Um, there's, uh, of course, the, the dermis, the epidermis, the subcutaneous layer. There's a lot to it. Yeah. These are things that just like, just like sterilization practices, every tattoo will practitioner should know and of course uh um probably you know again it's it's probably something that that we could we could there should be more research (laughs) there should be more study that's done about what's going on you know and then of course i do yeah i would agree uh, jake meeks does do some really excellent deep dives into this subject so there's there is information out there to know what was uh, the, the conversation him and carson hill if remind me that was the one wasn't it all right well there was one he did uh there was one he did where he talked about how the how the pigment gets into the skin that yeah. i you know i learned so much from that particular you know uh like call it a, a documentary if you like <laughs> but it was right. uh, very informative um so again uh, yeah, um fireside is a great resource <laughs> Oh, who is that? Spirit. Oh, this is Leilani. Holy cow. Uh, big already. Holy cow. Everybody shh. Jason, see you later, later Jason. Thank you Jason. so much. Thanks for having us. Jason. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm. Well A rare time when she's just sleep, huh? <laughs> so cute. Um 
Well, uh, again, I just want to thank everybody so much for coming. Um, you make this what it is. And so, uh, yeah, I, I do want to, you know, say thanks again to Gabe and to Guy for, uh, for everything they do behind the scenes. Um, much appreciated. Um, so anyway, I hope that, hey, anyway, I hope that throughout the week, you really start thinking about, uh, start thinking about yourself. You know what I mean? As far as stretching goes, right? Mm. Be considerate, stretch your, stretch your hands and stuff. It's going to be really, really beneficial. It's going to take a lot of practice. (laughs) You have to do it. You have to continually do it. Um, but I do believe that the benefits are there. And so I think it's something that I want to continue to do when we, you know, when we show up, we'll do some sketches to warm up, but then we'll stretch out a little bit. And hopefully through this weekly reminder, you know, we'll all get better at, uh, you know, at taking care of ourselves and each mm-hmm. other. So anyway, happy drawing everybody. This has been drawing for tattooers until next time. Uh, 